Greetings, friends. Here I am speaking in English about languages. I'd like to speak about language topology. What does language topology mean? Language topology means the different kinds of structures that languages use grammatically, i.e. isolating languages such as Chinese and a lot of the eight languages in the Southeast Asian Sprachbund or Sprachbund or speech area and also agglutinating languages such as the such as the Aleut Eskimo languages and some of the languages in Turkey the out some of the Altaic and Uralic languages now listen isolating languages means every single morpheme if you don't know what a morpheme is look it up on Wikipedia but every single morpheme has some type of individual meaning okay Ch Chinese is a great example it's an isolating language every single piece has a meaning and you can combine pieces to make compound words like a blackbird or such like that okay now an agglutinating or agglutinating language is a language where a morpheme will carry a specific kind of grammatical value example in English ED will mark the past tense okay so an S marks the plural those are examples in English alright in highly agglutinating languages like the Greenlandic language and the whole like Eskimo speech continuum there's a lot of these different EDS pieces that you string them all together and in a language like Chinese where you're gonna have a bunch of different separate individual words to convey an idea such as I eat breakfast on Tuesdays in Chinese I eat breakfast on Tuesdays five different words in a language like in a language like Eskimo or Greenlandic or any of the dialects therein that will all be you'll have you'll have, typically have a root word and then you'll have different affixes suffixes and prefixes to explain the same idea that's what that's what that's one aspect of language topology okay additionally that's pretty much all I wanted to say okay pretty much all the languages that people have experienced learning like all the major languages people learn what are they English French Spanish German all the languages of Europe or the main languages of Europe and then what else do people learn they're gonna learn Chinese Japanese maybe Korean alright those are like the main languages that people learn and Russian okay all these all the European languages are gonna be they're called analytic it's basically isolating languages with a few productive suffixes if you don't know what that means look it up a productive suffix or affix or whatever it's a productive affix such as past tense plural stuff like that additionally the languages Chinese isolating okay Japanese they might have some productive productive stuff like some but it's not agglutinating the only language that like a main language that people learn that's highly or higher agglutinating because it's a continuum right it's not you're either isolating agglutinating or you're or you're not you're gonna be somewhere in between the continuum from Chinese to Eskimo okay Turkish is what I was gonna say is a language that's more on this side of the scale agglutinating that people learn that a lot of people learn just because of the way it's set up okay there's the example of people from Yugoslavia if you learn Turkish or if you know anything about Turkish and you're serious about learning it you're probably gonna come across an example that says blah 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 the people who did not come from the former Yugoslavia blah 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 okay and it's all one big sentence but it's one word in Turkish 
you're interested in more learning about language topology, there's a book out there that I don't remember the name of. But if you guys want to know, I might be able to put it in uh, put it in the references or the description of this video. I'm interested in learning languages more on the agglutinating side because I find them more interesting. But there's not a lot out there that have a lot of learning materials. Thank you.